This article discusses the history of the principle of least action. For the application, please refer to action physics, the principle of least action, or, more accurately, the principle of stationary action, is a variational principle that, when applied to the action of a mechanical system, can be used to obtain the equations of motion for that system. In relativity, a different action must be minimized or maximized. The principle can be used to derive Newtonian, Lagrangian and Hamiltonian equations of motion, and even general relativity see Einstein-Hilbert action. The physicist Paul Dirac, and after him Julian Schwinger and Richard Feynman, demonstrated how this principle can also be used in quantum calculations. It was historically called least because its solution requires finding the path that has the least value. Its classical mechanics and electromagnetic expressions are a consequence of quantum mechanics, but the stationary action method helped in the development of quantum mechanics. The principle remains central in modern physics and mathematics, being applied in thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, the theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, particle physics, and string theory and is a focus of modern mathematical investigation in Morse theory. Maupertui principle and Hamilton's principle exemplify the principle of stationary action. The action principle is preceded by earlier ideas in optics. In ancient Greece, Euclid wrote in his Catoptrica that, for the path of light reflecting from a mirror, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Hero of Alexandria later showed that this path was the shortest length and least time. Scholars often credit Pierre Louis Maupertuis for formulating the principle of least action because he wrote about it in 1744 and 1746. However, Leonard Euler discussed the principle in 1744, and evidence shows that Gottfried Leibniz preceded both by 39 years. In 1933, Paul Dirac discerned the quantum mechanical underpinning of the principle in the quantum interference of amplitudes. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> General statement. The starting point is the action denoted s display style s calligraphic s of a physical system it is defined as the integral of the lagrangian l between two instants of time t1 and t2 technically a functional of the n generalized coordinates q equals q1 q2 qn which define the configuration of the system Q R R N display style math bf Q math bf R to math bf R caret N S Q T one T two equals T one T two L Q T Q T T D T Display style math call S Math BF Q T underscore one T underscore two equals int underscore T underscore one carrot T underscore two L Math BF Q T Math BF dot Q T T D T where the dot denotes the time derivative, and t is time. Mathematically, the principle is delta s equals zero. Display style delta mathcal s equals zero, where delta lowercase Greek delta means a small change. In words, this reads. The path taken by the system between times t1 and t2 and configurations q1 and q2 is the one for which the action is stationary no change to first order in applications the statement and definition of action are taken together delta t1 t2 l q q t D T 
equals zero. Display style delta int underscore t underscore one carrot t underscore two l math bf q math bf dot q t dt equals zero. The action and Lagrangian both contain the dynamics of the system for all times. The term path simply refers to a curve traced out by the system in terms of the coordinates in the configuration space i.e. the curve qt parameterized by time see also parametric equation for this concept topic <laughs> origins statements and controversy Topic. Fermat In the 1600s, Pierre de Fermat postulated that, "...light travels between two given points along the path of shortest time," which is known as the principle of least time or Fermat's principle. Credit for the formulation of the principle of least action is commonly given to Pierre Louis Maupertuis, who felt that nature is thrifty in all its actions, and applied the principle broadly. The laws of movement and of rest deduced from this principle being precisely the same as those observed in nature, we can admire the application of it to all phenomena. The movement of animals, the vegetative growth of plants, are only its consequences, and the spectacle of the universe becomes so much the grander, so much more beautiful, the worthier of its author, when one knows that a small number of laws, most wisely established, suffice for all movements. This notion of Maupertui, although somewhat deterministic today, does capture much of the essence of mechanics. In application to physics, Maupertui suggested that the quantity to be minimized was the product of the duration time of movement within a system by the vis viva, which is the integral of twice what we now call the kinetic energy T of the system. <laughs> Euler Leonard Euler gave a formulation of the action principle in 1744, in very recognizable terms, in the Additamentum II to his Methodus Inveniendi Linears Curvus Maximi Minive Proprietate Gordants. Beginning with the second paragraph, as Euler states, mvds is the integral of the momentum over distance traveled, which, in modern notation, equals the abbreviated or reduced action. Thus, Euler made an equivalent and apparently independent statement of the variational principle in the same year as Maupertui, albeit slightly later. Curiously, Euler did not claim any priority, as the following episode shows. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Disputed priority. Maupertuis priority was disputed in 1751 by the mathematician Samuel Koenig, who claimed that it had been invented by Gottfried Leibniz in 1707. Although similar to many of Leibniz's arguments, the principle itself has not been documented in Leibniz's works. Koenig himself showed a copy of a 1707 letter from Leibniz to Jacob Hermann with the principle, but the original letter has been lost. In contentious proceedings, Koenig was accused of forgery, and even the King of Prussia entered the debate, defending Maupertui, the head of his academy, while Voltaire defended Koenig. Euler, rather than claiming priority, was a staunch defender of Maupertui, and Euler himself prosecuted Koenig for forgery before the Berlin Academy on 13 April 1752. The claims of forgery were re-examined 150 years later, and archival work by C.I. Gerhardt in 1898 and W. Kibitz in 1913 uncovered other copies of the letter, and three others cited by Koenig, in the Bernoulli archives. <laughs> <laughs> Further development 
Euler continued to write on the topic, in his Reflections sur quelques lois générales de la nature 1748, he called the quantity «effort». His expression corresponds to what we would now call potential energy, so that his statement of least action in statics is equivalent to the principle that a system of bodies at rest will adopt a configuration that minimizes total potential energy. Topic: <laughs> Lagrange and Hamilton. Much of the calculus of variations was stated by Joseph Louis Lagrange in 1760 and he proceeded to apply this to problems in dynamics. In Mechanique Analytique 1788, Lagrange derived the general equations of motion of a mechanical body. William Rowan Hamilton in 1834 and 1835 applied the variational principle to the classical Lagrangian function L equals T minus V display style L equals T V to obtain the Euler Lagrange equations in their present form. Topic Jacobi and Morse In 1842, Carl Gustav Jacobi tackled the problem of whether the variational principle always found minima as opposed to other stationary points, maxima or stationary saddle points. Most of his work focused on geodesics on two-dimensional surfaces. The first clear general statements were given by Marston Morse in the 1920s and 1930s, leading to what is now known as Morse theory. For example, Morse showed that the number of conjugate points in a trajectory equaled the number of negative eigenvalues in the second variation of the Lagrangian. <laughs> Gauss and Hertz Other extremal principles of classical mechanics have been formulated, such as Gauss's principle of least constraint and its corollary, Hertz's principle of least curvature. <laughs> <laughs> Disputes about possible teleological aspects The mathematical equivalence of the differential equations of motion and their integral counterpart has important philosophical implications. The differential equations are statements about quantities localized to a single point in space or single moment of time. For example, Newton's second law f equals m a display style math bf f equals m math bf a states that the instantaneous force F applied to a mass M produces an acceleration A at the same instant. By contrast, the action principle is not localized to a point, rather, it involves integrals over an interval of time and for fields an extended region of space. Moreover, in the usual formulation of classical action principles, the initial and final states of the system are fixed, e.g., Given that the particle begins at position x1 at time t1 and ends at position x2 at time t2, the physical trajectory that connects these two endpoints is an extremum of the action integral. In particular, the fixing of the final state has been interpreted as giving the action principle a teleological character which has been controversial historically. However, according to W. Yorgrau and S. Mandelstam, the teleological approach, presupposes that the variational principles themselves have mathematical characteristics which they de facto do not possess in addition some critics maintain this apparent teleology occurs because of the way in which the question was asked by specifying some but not all aspects of both the initial and final conditions the positions but not the velocities we are making some inferences about the initial conditions from the final conditions and it is this backward Inference that can be seen as a teleological explanation. 
Teleology can also be overcome if we consider the classical description as a limiting case of the quantum formalism of path integration, in which stationary paths are obtained as a result of interference of amplitudes along all possible paths. The short story Story of Your Life by the speculative fiction writer Ted Chiang contains visual depictions of Fermat's principle along with a discussion of its teleological dimension. Keith Devlin's The Math Instinct contains a chapter, Elvis the Welsh Corgi Who Can Do Calculus, that discusses the calculus embedded in some animals as they solve the least time problem in actual situations. <laughs> See also Topic Notes and References Topic External Links Interactive Explanation of the Principle of Least Action Interactive Applet to Construct Trajectories Using Principle of Least Action George F. Georgi Yordanov twenty twelve a quantitative measure, mechanism and attractor for self-organization in networked complex systems". Self-organizing systems. Lecture Notes in Computer Science, 7166. pp. 90–5. DOI, 10.1007, 978-3-642-0010. ISBN 9783-642-28582-0. George F., George E., George F., Iskren. 2002. The Least Action and the Metric of an Organized System. Open Systems and Information Dynamics, 9, 4, 371 to 380. Arxiv, 1004.3518. DOI 10.1023 a 1 trillion 21 billion 858 million 318296 Terakovich Vladislav 2015 Metaphysics of the Principle of Least Action Arxiv 1511.03429 Physics Hist PH 1.1 